today's tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a simple and easy monster sheet cake. Okay, so first I'm taking my food coloring pen and I'm going to create a large mouth for the monster. And if you'd rather just eyeball it, that's fine. I just think it's easier for me to use a pen. Okay, so here we go. I'm just gonna make a large mouth and our monster is gonna be pretty happy. But if you want to make um, a monster that has maybe not so much of a smile, then feel free to go that route. Okay, this is just kind of our loose guide to go by. Okay, I just took a step back and saw that my mouth was a little bit closer to the edge on this side than this side, so I'm just gonna extend it just a little further. Okay, so now I'm just taking a sharp knife and I'm making a shallow cut because I don't wanna lose a lot of cake to the mouth. So it just takes a little bit of cutting to give us that look of depth. So I just cut maybe like a fourth of an inch down. And now I'm just going back in within those lines and my knife at an angle. And we'll just gradually piece by piece cut away the mouth. Uh, so now I have my buttercream that I've tinted with Americolor Electric Green, and this is just our fluffy vanilla buttercream recipe. And I'm just going to do a really thin crumb coat, and then soon we're going to come back in with our grass tip and create some fur for the monster. I've crumb coated most of the cake at this point, but I did put a little bit of green frosting into a disposable piping bag with the tip snipped away just to get some of these hard to reach places on the inside of the mouth. Uh, when I was just trying to spread the frosting before into these areas, it was getting really crummy because of the cake being room temperature. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is fill the mouth with a thin layer of black frosting, and I just have my Wilton Tip 12, just medium-sized round tip. If you would rather just take a disposable piping bag with black frosting and snip the tip away, that's fine too. This Tip 10 just gives us a more uniform layer of frosting, I feel like. Okay, so I'm gonna fill this in and we'll meet right back. Okay, now I'm kind of smoothing out and scraping away any excess black frosting because I don't want to completely lose the dimension that we created with our carving. But I did want to make sure that all of those crumbs are covered with black. Okay, so next I have my grass tip, which is a Wilton 233. has lots of the little holes in the tip and I am just touching down and pulling straight up with my frosting. You can make the fur as long and shaggy as you'd like. I think I'm just gonna kinda do a medium length for the fur. And I'm just gonna cover the entire sheet cake with this. So we will meet back when I'm a little bit further along. I think it's easiest to start on the very bottom if you are going to do the sides and just either go up one row at a time or one section at a time. And you can see my uh, the fur that I'm piping is just all kind of different lengths and I'm not being super neat or uniform about it like I would normally would if I was piping just a really neat grass texture onto a cake. This, because it's a monster, is just really shaggy. Okay, so now I have orange buttercream 
and a grass tip and I'm just going to make polka dots kind of all over our monster. Okay, so now I have melted some bark, chocolate bark candy coating, and I'm just gonna put it on this wax paper lined cookie sheet. Okay, now I'm just gonna take my spatula and spread it out. I'm not gonna let the chocolate get too thin because I need for it to be strong. This is gonna be some funny monster teeth. So I'm probably keeping it about an eighth of an inch thick. And that should be enough. So you can either let it set up on the countertop if you want to be able to cut perfect, perfectly square teeth. The best way to do that is probably to just let it firm up on the countertop and you'll just check it. Once it takes on a matte finish, you can take a knife and score it. If you're in a hurry, you can just chill this for a few minutes in the refrigerator. And in that case, you would kind of break it into pieces um, and try to get a, a uniform look that way. Okay, so our chocolate has been sitting out on the counter and it is now firm enough that I can cut it with a knife and it'll hold its shape. So this is basically going to be two rows of teeth for us. I'm just gonna cut a horizontal line. And then we'll cut several lines this way. That seems like a good width. You can make them all different sizes if you'd rather, or you can make sharp teeth if you wanna do a lot of diagonal lines, you'll get lots of triangles. And this is probably way more teeth than we'll actually need. So I'm gonna let these chill in the refrigerator just for a few minutes. It'll be nice and firm so that I can easily handle them and then we're gonna place them in the cake. Okay, I've just taken this out of the refrigerator and the little chocolate teeth that we made are nice and firm. You could also put them in the freezer for a few minutes if you'd rather. So these teeth are a little bit longer. Some of mine are a little longer than they need to be. I wanted them to be a little bit long though so that they could anchor into the cake. So we'll just go ahead and start with this one. Let me start on the top so you can get a better view. And I think I'll make it a little shorter. Okay. And we'll just push that in and it just stays in place. Okay. And I'm just going to continue with the teeth all the way across. And they're slightly suspended because we do have a little bit of an indentation where the mouth is. So I do kind of like that look. But I'm gonna continue all the way across and we'll meet back in just a few minutes. Okay, so now I'm creating the eyes and this is fondant with a little tie loose kneaded into it just so it would dry more quickly. And it's about two and a fourth inches in diameter, but just make it however large you'd like to. So I've dipped my lollipop stick into piping gel and I'm just gonna twist it back and forth. Okay, and now I'm just going to cut out a fairly large circle to give the eye some color and we'll just brush it with a little piping gel and center it onto our eye. And then for the black, I'm going to use the larger end of a 2D piping tip and then glue that on with piping gel also. Okay, and we'll just slide that down and I have a anchor that's gonna help keep things in place and I'm just kind of pressing it down. 
Okay, now I'm just pushing the other one in also. Okay, now I have a little bit of white buttercream with a Wilton 3 round tip. Just as an optional step, but sometimes I like to add just a little white dot to the pupils. Just to kind of bring it to life. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. And I think it looks good. Okay, so our cake is finished. I love how this cake turned out. Um, it's such a cute design and so simple to create. So this would be perfect for kids' Halloween parties or birthday parties. And I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.